Hi, welcome to my Camel K in nutshell video. Camel is a great tool to integrate between two systems, and this is how it works. First of all, a user will define a Camel DSL. The Camel DSL defines how the system connect to each other using some kind of patterns or doing some type of data transformations. You can package it as a normal Java jar file or into a Java E container using a WAR file or similar things like that, or you can package it as a OSGI bundle, or you, if you really like microservices, you can place your Camel applications into a Spring Boot runtime. And not just that, you can also containerize your, job, your microservices application by using a Fabricate Maven plugin. It's very likely that you will place your container onto some kind of platform to host them. And in this case, we'll be using Kubernetes. To host your applications onto Kubernetes, First of all, you need to turn your applications into a container image and then deploy it into Kubernetes. You can do that in your own computer and then push the image onto Kubernetes so that it will then run as a pod inside Kubernetes. Or there's many other ways of doing it, such as pushing your code into some kind of a code repository and then push your code up to the repository. This will then trigger a source to image events and then the events will then trigger the build inside Kubernetes to build your application as an image and then deploy it as pod. I don't know if you notice it, but for developer, this is a very long and painful process just to wait for the application to be on and ready to run. And if you're integrating your application with others, sometimes you have to replicate the entire ecosystem within your developer environment as well. And also the deployment process can be complicated because of many objects you need to create in Kubernetes. So this is where CamelK comes into play, where developers will have direct interaction with Kubernetes so they don't have to wait for the painful long process to deploy the applications on top of it. So what the developer has to do is, in the developer desktop, we will need to install a binary file that is responsible for talking to Kubernetes or doing any other interactions. Kubernetes will be using the operator patterns to maintain all the lifecycle of your applications. And before that, we need to create CRDs, the custom resource definitions. So these are used by the operators to talk to Kubernetes to, to create the resource that's needed in order for us to spin up Camel inside Kubernetes. In the namespace itself, we will have to install a CamelK operator that is responsible for the lifecycle of all the CamelK applications in the, inside the same namespace. So all we have to do is to just to run Camel install. It will then create the operators that is responsible for creating, updating, deleting all the Camel resource and also other resource relating to the application itself. As for the Camel DSL, it supports many different kinds of language like Java, Groovy, Kotlin, or you can even deploy that onto Knatives or many other languages that support it. To run the application, simply use the binary camel again by, by running camelk. And what it's going to do is going to talk to the camelk operators. The camelk operators will then go ahead, choose the correct runtime, set up the project, adding all the boilerplate code, adding the dependencies, packaging everything together, and then containerize the application into a container image. And then Kubernetes will take this image and then deploy it as a running pod, as well as other resources that's needed to run this application, such as services, routes, config map, and etc. So there we are, we have a running pod running applications. And this is a super simple demo that I wrote that just prints out some constant value in the log. And here I'm running it with CamelK, the binary, and you see that it's now sending it up to my Kubernetes OpenShift. And now you see that it's already running on the cloud and it's really quick. Camel K makes developers' life easier in the development mode where all the changes made locally will quickly reflect um, in Kubernetes. So developers get their first hand fast respond inside the Kubernetes system when developing the Camel application. So here I am doing the same camel simple application again, but this time I'm running it in a development mode. So when I trigger the development mode, it's going to still do the same, which is uploading all my code and build everything through operators and then running on my OpenShift environment. But this time I'm changing things on the fly. So I'm adding 
hello Christina to the end of my log. So if you go back to the console, you'll see now that um, CamelK has detected there's a change in my code. It's picking it up, sending it up back to operators, and it's going to um, CamelK is going to restart a part for me with the new code. I have updated it. Now you see all the changes has been updated on the on OpenShift as well. So that's it. This is CamelK in a nutshell. That makes developers' life much easier when developing Camel applications onto Kubernetes so they don't have to wait forever for the deployment process. And also, they don't have to spend time recreating the whole ecosystem inside their local environment in order for them to develop applications. Thank you.